Okay, so so right here, 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 here. Okay, so basically, basically, we're gonna touch on some quick uh, questions and answers. Right? We'll get into some more details. Hopefully, hopefully, in the follow-up videos. Right? This is your brother Wyndham Ross. I Adonis Tafari, LOJ Society, Rastafari Rabbi, yes I also used to broadcast on Rastafari sabbatical as well. But firstly, let us address certain certain basic questions. Try to clear, you know, the confusion. Is there slavery in the Bible? Well, in the Bible nowadays that have been retranslated or rewritten, you know, since all these new Bibles, let's say since the maybe late 60s or so, there's all these other versions of the Bible in circulation. But even in the time of chattel slavery and the Anglo-Americans and what they did to my people, the once lost, now found, of the House of Israel, the Bait Yisrael, black people, so-called, in the Americas, black and brown sheeple, right, in the Americas and the Caribbean, there was no slavery in the Bible, in the KJV, the King James Version, there's no slavery. There's no slavery there. All the slavery has been imagined, and it's like the that old three-card Monty. You know, watch the cups, watch the cups, watch the cards. Is it here? Okay, you see it here, and they shuffle it around. And you know, many people when they play that three-card Monty game, if you ever seen it played or played it, you really been played. And that's what people have been played with this whole slavery talk in the Bible. And what's so very interesting is that as you get to see and check out and hear various different people's right in fact it's just doing some basic research and going through some basic research for this q and a right here what we're stating that or asking the question is there slavery in the bible is there slavery in the king james version of the bible i think we're just going to affirm it as there is no slavery right proof that there's no slavery in the king james version of the bible so what's the best way what is the best way to prove right, that there's no slavery in the King James Version of the Bible? And this is not because we're supporting all of its translation, but just to put it into the context. This is why we mentioned the three-card Monty and also watch the cups, you know, when they have like the ball or whatever under the cups and they shuffle around the cups and you think it's here and they shuffle around and they say, all right, pick where, do you know where it's at? And, you know, most times, most ones will, you know, they'll get played. They get played with the three card month. I remember I used to watch this a lot of times going downtown, like Brooklyn. You know, downtown Brooklyn, they used to have ones and ones, you know, doing these little hustles and everything. It's a hustle. And folks have been hustled, academically hustled, religiously, in a lot of the, sort of the latter day churches have been hustled by this. But the fact is that there is no slavery. In the Bible, and there's no slavery in the King James Version of the Bible. And a lot of people can say, oh, he, he, he's a nut job. He is crazy. Yeah, keep talking your talk. Talk all of that. You know, slander, blaspheme, curse, insult. You just bring it, bring it, bring it on. But one thing you can't bring on is the fact. According to the context, what we're saying is that in the KJV, the King James, the 400-year Bible, in the 400-year Bible that was known over the past 400 years in this Western, whitewashed, Gentile, counterfeit Christianity, Anglo-American world order, the times of the Gentiles, that in that version, which is the main version of the Bible, especially used in the places that there was slavery, in the places that there was chattel slavery. Folks are going to say, well, didn't they use the Bible to justify slavery? I mean, people use a lot of things to justify a lot of things, but it doesn't mean that it's justifiable. But you just get caught up on the bull. Doesn't mean it's justifiable. Yeah, they did use the Bible to justify slavery. And emphasis, they use and they abuse the text of the Bible. It's like the whole thing about the curse, the curse of, what they call it, the curse of, um, the curse of Ham. If you look in the Bible, in the very section of the Bible, they say that the curse of Ham is found. <laughs> You'll find that there's no curse of Ham in the Bible. It's like, wait, wait, wait. Remember in school, there was reading comprehension. All right, reading comprehension. Is it in the text? Is it in the text? It's not in the text. So this is why we say this deception, like the three-card Monty. You think that, you know, it's under that card. Right, and you saw that card, and watch the cards, watch the cards, watch the cards. Here, you see it here. Watch the cards, watch the cards. All right, where's the card? You know, or, or where where is it? Under which card is it? 
and you say there because you thought you was watching the cards. You thought you, you, you kept your eye on the proverbial ball. But then when they flip over the card, it's not there. And then it's under the other card. You say, wait, 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 hold, hold up. What happened? Remember how people are surprised? I don't know if any of y'all witnessed those things. We witnessed this on numerous occasions, right? And we thought that it was amazing. We thought it was amazing. You know, <laughs> even sometimes we were watching the cards and we didn't even see at first. You know, after a while, we began to see the trick. Like we saw the trick. We've seen the trick in this. This is why we say that there was no slavery in the King James Version of the Bible. Now, people are going to be like, well, well, how do they use, well, how do they use the Bible then to justify slavery? That's the con. That's the deception. That's the con game. That's the deception. That, that's one that's been hoodwinked, bamboozled. The wool has been pulled over their eyes. All right? This is why they say the devil is a liar. The devil is a deceiver. Now, some of y'all might think, well, I'm lying about this, right? Because you've been made to believe. You've been made to believe with a whole bunch of make-believe. Even with people with PhDs, people with PhDs and scholarly degrees deceiving you with their make-believe, right? Saying, well, the Bible justifies slavery. And you know what they use? They use a lot of these latter-day translations of the Bible. We can show and prove that. When we say latter-day translation, when were these first translations at the NIV? Right, the NIV. We did a bunch of research on it before, but just jumping into this subject matter again, we'll bring that up and follow up on that. Now, if you look in other versions of the Bible, well, you know what? Let's get into the show and prove right here. Let's get into the show. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so let's do it like this. See, we're searching the KJV. The King James Version of the Bible. Now, if you say, why are you searching there? I right, see the deceivers. The deceivers know what I'm on because this is why they use those versions, these latter day versions, the versions that were brought out nearly at the end of the 400 years. All right, because 400 years, 16, 19, 20, 19, a lot of these versions came out about what, maybe 10, 20, 20 or so years ago, around the turn of the Western Gentile millennium probably a little before that they was working on it right you know so we're going to look right into king james version 1611 because this is to provoke us to ask wait wait so hold up for a moment if there's no slavery in the bible okay let's just do this right here this is the show and prove there's no slavery in the bible right l s l a v e r y there we go right there let's search oh oh look no slavery in the Bible. No slavery in the Bible. Now let's do this here. I don't know if this can do this like this right here. Maybe we can go to some of the compare, some of the compare versions right here. No, they don't give us the compare version right here. But there's no slavery in the Bible. In the King James Version of the Bible. And the King James Version of the Bible is the version that was used by the Anglo-Americans, those who came out of the Canaanites. We call them the Canaanites. Israelites are not Canaanites. You know, the European, the Indo-European nations are the Canaanites. We're going to follow up on that because a lot of these black con, 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 a lot of the blacks in the con, con, the con consciousness community are conning you, right? Conning you, right? But let's, here, 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 let's do this right here. Okay, no slavery in the Bible. Go look it up. No slavery in the Bible. So it, isn't it amazing that they're making you believe and a lot of you already have been made to believe by that make-believe that slavery was used in the Bible? Like we said, they use the Bible. When I say they, the Gentiles, the, the wasp, the wasp, not the bees, <laughs> the wasp, the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Christians, yes, they use the Bible the same way they use and abuse black people. The same way they use and abuse the lost sheep of the house of Israel. All right? The same way they did that is the same way they use the Bible. They use and abuse the Bible. They've been telling you that slavery is in the Bible. Right? And well, what Bible were they using? 1611. That's about a little over 400 years, right? That's a little over 400 years. So wasn't they using that particular Bible? History, we can go and look up the facts. The facts, the evidence, yes. They used the King James Version of the Bible. 
Now these new Bibles, not the NIV, the NSV, the this or that, the this or that, the V. No, 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 no. Now people say, well, well, doesn't it talk about um servants? Servants. Yeah, servants. It's all kind of servants. A servant is like an employee. You can treat them. For example, you work for a job, right? You're an employee, right? You get paid a paycheck. Were my people, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, were they paid a paycheck? I mean, if you want to call the whipping, the whipping and the beating, checking them, and that was their paycheck. Okay, you can you can say that, but that's just following along with the rest of the deception, right? Let's look up slave in the Bible. Now, the next point is that slave doesn't really appear in the Bible either. Slavery doesn't appear. We just proved that right here. Let's just go through this once again. We're searching the KJV version of the Bible. We can't find one verse that says zero, zero. So if you believe slavery was in the KJV, the version of the Bible they used during the time of chattel slavery in America the Caribbean, then you are a zero. You're a zero and you have zero evidence. You can't use a latter day translation of the Bible that has changed words to prove something that happened before based on the other translation they used then. So you can't change something, you know, like, like changing the contract. You sign a contract and you have a copy of the contract that you sign, right? And then somebody changed words in that contract and they take you to court. And when you go to court, you see the changed version. You say, no, 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 that wasn't the version of the contract. And you say, well, what's your proof? Do you have evidence? Do you have any exhibit, any evidence, any proof of it? And you say, yeah, I have proof of the contract. And they find the original contract didn't have these changed words. What should happen to the case? I'm not saying what would happen to the case, not, not with the, the laws of these same liars, you know, these same false grudges and these judges, these grudges and judges, but let's look at slave. Now, we did this before in another vlog, another video. Let's go right here. Oh, people say, look, 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 look. Two verses in the Bible, in the King James Version. We got Yadin. You, you don't got, uh-uh. <laughs> uh-uh. It's just your imagination. It's just your imagination running away with you. It's just your imagination. Right? You know why we say this? Okay, look at the first verse. It's Jeremiah. Yeremiah. Yeremiah, Yeremiah. Hermes. It's Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 14. The thing you need to understand, right, is that the italicizations, right, the italicizations were not there in the original languages that was translated from. And then that's proved even by the interlinear Bibles. You can prove this for yourself. There's a lot of websites here we're using. Was this a my sword? My sword, my sword, my sword, my sword. Where are my pelethites and my kerathites? Where's my pelethites and my kerathites? <laughs> you know, the runners and the cutters. All right, let's go right here. Look, this verse right here, this does not, see, there's no strong word connected to slave. The slave word right there is italicized. Let's read the verse. As is. Is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Why is he spoiled? The correct reading of the verse from the original languages that they claim the KJV was translated from is Israel a slave? He a homeborn? Why is he spoiled? That is the true reading. This is what we've told many of I and I fellow Habarim, I and I associates, I and I fellows, companions, you know, even many of the Talmudim, the disciples. We said that when you read in the King James Version of the Bible, almost every place you find italicized words, those were put in there, those were inserted in there by the translators, right, in order to give a context to the rawness of what they found in the original languages like the Hebrew. Like, let me just read it again without italicization. Israel a servant? He a homeborn? Why is he spoiled? Why is he spoiled? We can go through verse by verse according to the Masoretic Hebrew and you will not find this word slave there. Yes, you would find servant. Now, some people will tell you, well, a servant, a slave is the same thing. That's like saying that an employee Right, an employee, right, is the same as a slave. Some people might feel, some of you might feel subjectively when you work for a job, right? Like many of my people, they say, oh, I'm going to the slave, or oh, I was on the plantation, right? Which is an insult if they are of my people, 
and our ancestors who actually were enslaved. Slave comes from a European, an Indo-European word, Slav. The Indo-Europeans were the Canaanites. The Canaanites were the arch enemies of the Israelites. The Israelites are not Canaanites. Don't believe those lies of the fat cats. Garfield, don't believe those lies. Don't believe those lies, lie, 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 lie. See what they do? It's like the three-card Monty game. It's like the cups game. Right? Watch the cups, watch the cups, watch the cups. You're watching the cups, okay, it's here. Watch the cups, watch the cups, watch the cards, watch the cards. You see it, you see it, you know? And then the worst part is when you bet on it. When you bet on it, a lot of people are betting on it. They're betting on these lies, especially a lot of the lies that are, that are rising up and coming and circulating in the black con consciousness community. That's not the black consciousness community, it's the black con consciousness. The black con consciousness. They're, they're conning your consciousness. Right? It's just like the three card Monty game and, and who were the majority of people doing those three card Monty games, at least the ones that we saw, right? In Brooklyn and places of predominantly black and brown people, it was black and brown people. Right? It's just a lot of black people, but a lot of black and brown people who were doing those con games on who? Were they doing on the white man? A couple of maybe a few here or there, but majority were conning their own people. Right? For what? Clout? <laughs> you know, well for, for probably cash. More more likely for cash. You know, conning them out of their resources, conning them for cash, tricking them, tricking them. It's like the Honorable Elijah Muhammad talk about trick knowledge. Mm. Uh, he, had, he had some word relics, definitely. It was some word relics, trick knowledge. It's, it was trick knowledge. Trick knowledge here in this North country, here in this wilderness of North America. Well, let's go to the second verse. Right? So we have one verse in the what's called the Old Testament, more the Hebrew Bible, and... We have one verse in the New Testament, right? What's called the New Testament. So one, ver one verse, Old Testament, one verse, New Testament. And we're calling this, we're saying that there is no slavery. Slavery does not exist in the King James Version of the Bible. There is no slavery in the King James 1611 Bible. There is no slavery. And we just proved that. There's no slavery. Now, Ones will say, well, well, didn't they use the Bible? They used the Bible to justify slavery. You, you ever heard that saying that they said that so-and-so could indict, like uh, so, some kinds of lawyers and liars can indict a ham sandwich? You know, you've heard that something like, something to that effect, that they can indict a ham sandwich. You know, some deceivers and con people are very, see, I'm telling you the truth, but some of you think I'm deceiving you. You think this is a deception I'm showing you. I'm showing you the half of the story you haven't been told. I'm showing you the unadulterated truth. I'm going to the version of the Bible that they use over the past 400 years, and I'm showing and proving you that there's no slavery. The word slavery does not exist in that version of the Bible from Old Testament to New Testament. And now I'm showing you that even the word slave does not exist in those places they want to make you believe. It's like the curse of Ham. The curse of Ham is make-believe. It's make-believe. A lot of you believe in Superman, Batman. You believe in Superman and Batman. Uberman. That's what it was, Uberman. Actually, it was Uberman. So when I say Uberman, some of you youngins are going to think about the Uber. You know, the Uber. No. Uberman was the origination of Superman. Because Uber in the Germanic languages means super. Right, so actually it was Uberman, and that's kind of connected with the Nazis and all that kind of stuff right there. But you believe in Superman, Batman, you know, Batman and Robin and all these things. You know, you watch these movies and they seem so real, right? Seem so real. He really leaped over a tall building. Oh, wow. Remember a story that my earthly father, God bless his soul, had told me back in the Harlem days where he grew up in Harlem. He talked about how when the Superman, you know, it was that, I, was the, I think it was the black and white, I think maybe it was the black and white, maybe it was a radio show, but probably the black and white Superman, I forget that guy that used to play Superman and everything, that white guy and everything, but he was talking about, he told me that there was a, a child that really believed in it, right? You know, he believed Superman, and he took his bed sheet, he took his bed sheet, he wrapped it around his neck, you know, like, you know, tied around his neck like a cape and everything, right? He went to, like, the fire escape. Or the balcony, like probably the fire escape and everything. And he thought he could fly. And he jumped off, right? This, this was a story that my father, who grew up in Harlem back in those days, was familiar with, right? And he jumped off of the balcony. And, of course, the, the child killed him. You know, he, he basically killed himself. Because he believed in the lie. It's like y'all who want to believe in these lies, right? And we're here to expose these lies for those who can receive it. 
right, for those who can receive it. Now, I know a lot of the atheists out there, <laughs> right, and, and the atheist friends out there, so to speak, you know, you know, they can't really hear this. They can't really see this, right, because they base their belief on a lie. It's like saying that, well, the truth of this doesn't exist. Like, you know, God don't exist. You know, the true God, El Elohe Yisrael, don't exist. It's like, you know the dog whistle? You know the dog whistle? There's such a thing called a dog whistle. You know about a dog whistle? Right? The dog whistle. You can blow a dog whistle, right? And none of us as so-called human beings will be able to hear it. But the dogs, all the dogs would hear the dog whistle because it's on a different frequency. It's like the truth of what we're saying, the good news, the gospel of the King of Kings. Some folks can't hear this. They can't hear this on a different frequency. And some of y'all can hear it. Right? Because y'all can hear, Yah has opened, Yah has opened up your ears to hear it. Right? But here, here, here. Revelation 18 and 13. So we touched on the verse from the Old Testament where slave right there in italicization. Now, should, even though some of the people say, well, look, slave is there, slave is there, slave is there. Right? But slavery here is talking about Israel. It's talking about who? Israel. Isn't that ironic? Since it was the Israelites, the black and the brown people who were enslaved by these cracker, pecker wood, Gentiles, Anglo-Americans, Canaanites. Isn't that interesting? That even where it is found as italics, which means that it was not in the original. We, we went through the, We could go through this again verse by verse. But some of them don't want that because, you know, they can't hear. They, they, they're blind. They're blind. Dumb, deaf. And let's go right here. Revelation 18, 13. Right? This is talking about Babylon. Talking about the merchandise of Babylon. Right? The merchandise of Babylon. And right? see what this end time, this latter day Anglo American world order. What's interesting is that New York, New York, right, was once known as Babylon. I'm talking about the great city. The great city, the Empire State City, was known as Babylon. Right? Also, Babylon was called Baby, Baby Lond London, was called Baby London. Babylon was also referred to in history as Babylon. And also, Rome and that whole Papal Vaticanian thing, right, was also called Babylon. So, let's just put that there on the record, right? So, those who can receive the truth will receive the truth, right? Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. That's from the scripts. But y'all probably know that movie from um, with that, that, that Tom Cruise and Jack Nicholson. You want to know the truth? Yeah, I want to know the truth. You can't handle the truth. <laughs> Revelation 18, 13. And cinnamon. This is what the, this great city does um, business in, right? All the products and all the merchandise, right? And cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves. Oh, got you. That's, that's what a lot of them probably are saying. They, 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 they think they got something. Right? No, you, 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 you're going you're gonna to get got. Right? And slaves and souls of men. Mm. Let's click on this word for slaves. Right? Look at this word for slave. Slave here is the G. Right? The G is for the Greek. Right? right? The G, the coin of Greek, the G4983. It's the word soma. 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 Right? In the, in the coin of Greek, soma. What is soma? Soma is the body. It should have been translated and bodies and souls of men. Body and soul. Right? So one of the products of Babylon is bodies and souls. Bodies and souls. Now, are you going to say like a body? So your body is a slave? In a sense, maybe, your body, you know, maybe the body is a slave. We can have that reasoning, that philosophical discussion. But the fact remains that this is not a direct translation. This is a transpolation, like a trans interpretation, a, a, um, um, not an interpretation, but an interpolation, what's called an interpolation. They're looking at what the actual word is, and they're saying, well, we don't want to put what's really there. We, we, we see it as being this, so they put something else there to make their point about what they think the text should say, but not really telling you or translating what the text actually says. That's a, like an interpolation. They, they're like reading into the text, you know? So here, according to Thayer's definition, one, the body both of men and animals. The A, 1A, a dead body or corpse. So you're going to enslave a dead body or corpse? Now we can get into the whole Negro, nigger, nigger 
in the in the in the what they call it the the, the Latin black right nigger black and the O at the end we can speculate that that's from the Omega like the Alpha and Omega the beginning and end and Omega means death so it means dead black okay you can go there if you want to go there and we can go there as well but we're just looking at this second place that slave is found in the translation of the 400 year Bible known as the King James Version of the Bible because see when you really get this right here you'll recognize how deep the so-called proverbial um, the, the the rabbit hole goes right how deep the rabbit hole goes because if slavery did not and does not exist in the King James Version and if the King James Version of the Bible was the Bible that was used during the times of slavery over the past 400 years and if they use the Bible to justify slavery what kind of con game do they have that was some powerful con game you talk about Jedi mind tricks you know Je and it's not just on black folks they did these tricks it's on white folks it's white people who deceived and con their fellow white people to go along with their evil by saying that it is in the good book when it was never in the so-called good book. It was never in the Bible. And a lot of the atheists and the rest of them out there that speak against the word of, you know, the Bible and everything, they know this. They know this, right? And they probably can't believe that even the Bible believers, there's not one Bible believer, so-called, right? Except for what, Yadin, Rasai Adonis, and maybe a few others out there. Right, who really have, could stand up and say, there's no slavery in the King James Version of the Bible. And see, we're specifically saying the King James Version, but there's slavery in the other versions. The other versions came out lately. The other versions are not older than 100 years ago, or really less than 100 years ago, some of them less than 50 years ago. These other versions of the Bible, these are recent versions of the Bible where they have inserted the word slavery they, they wrote it over servants. And then they want to tell you that a servant and a slave is the same thing. So when you go to a restaurant and the maitre d' comes to your table and asks what you would like. And you tell them what, to, what you would like or a waitress. So a waitress, right, who gets tips and maybe gets a salary and so forth and so on. You're saying that a waitress is a slave. Now, the waitress or the maitre d' or the servant might feel like a slave. And some of them might be working for a bad employer who be like ripping them off on their wages and maybe treating them harshly because of their desperate condition to work and to you try to make a little bit of money. But let's put this fact on the table that the, my people, that the so-called black and brown people did not receive any paycheck. They could not negotiate or choose like, oh, yeah, I'll work for you for this wage and so forth and so on. No, that didn't happen. The slaves, the enslaved, rather more correctly, my people were never really slaves. They become slaves nowadays, but they were enslaved, right? The enslaved black and brown people, right, did not receive a paycheck, right? And they were never called servants. <laughs> they were never called employees. They were called slaves. And the word slave come from the Indo-European language. It's like, it's like Slavic. It comes from that root, Slavic, Slavic. And those Indo-European people, if you study them biblically, they are the biblical Canaanites. Boom. Also some Edomites mixed up. Edomite, the Edomite Canaanites, right? The Edomite Canaanites, right? Which the Bible actually speaks later on in the prophecy that the Canaanites are the merchants. The merchants. It defines the Canaanites as the merchants. Wow. Why do we say wow right there? We say wow right there because let's see if we have this right here. Okay, let's go right here. Let's bring this up in our exhibits, in our exhibits, in our exhibits. Do we have this here in the exhibits? Okay, um, the merchants, the merchants, the merchants, the merchants of the earth. Boom. Let's, so let's go to this one right here. Slave ships. Scriptural justification used to support slavery. Scriptural justifications. Right? That doesn't mean that the scripture justifies that, but they use the scripture. They twisted the scripture. They hoodwink and bamboozled. And my comparison is to the curse of Ham. The curse of Ham, where's that in what, what, what Genesis chapter 9? Genesis chapter 9, you go there, it says, Curse be Canaan. 
Now, even though Canaan has a relationship to Ham, they didn't say the curse of Canaan. But because they are the Canaanites. They are the European, the Anglo-Europeans are the Canaanites, are the, those Indo-European people who were known before they migrated more and more west as Slavic people. Slavic, Slavic people, right? And if you know the background on the history, they feel that they were enslaved by the Israelites, by the black people. So if you really see the, how deep this rabbit hole goes, right? Many slave ships had on board a Christian minister to help oversee and bless the passage. Now, we're not denying any of that. All that is facts. All right? Slave ships' names included Jesus, Grace of God, Angel, Liberty, and Justice. <laughs> and the con game goes on and on and on and on, right? And the con game, Jesus, was the name of the slave ship captained by Sir John Hawkins in 1564 by appointment of the Queen of England. All right? Now, what you're going to have to be able to do is, well, show me the version of the Bibles that they had in 1564. Uh-huh. What Bibles were they reading in 1564 because you know the king james version of the bible is 1611 so maybe you can find something in that version of the bible but get this that version of the bible is not the version of the bible they were using for our 400 year period of time over here in the americas and the caribbean boom that wasn't the version of the bible the version and this might be one of the reasons why they didn't want black people to read the bible because maybe at that time they thought, well, since slavery is not in the Bible, and even the two slave verses in the Bible are, are imaginations, interpolations, maybe one of these Negroes, you know, one of these blacks, these Israelites, you know, the enslaved black people, these enslaved Israelites that we have taken their name from and now call them Negroes, maybe, maybe they're going to read this and they're going to, and they're going to see, <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe they're, maybe they're going to see the truth. And they're going to expose us. Maybe that was one of the reasons. Because remember, the white man, next point is that the white man didn't give niggas the Bible. They gave black people, they gave the enslaved Israelites, they gave them something called the slave Bible. And the slave Bible, I think Exodus, most of Exodus is not there. The Psalms are not there. They cut out so many books and areas of the Bible in the Bible that they gave to. The only Bible they gave to black people was the slave Bible. Right? They said that if black people read the Bible, they should be, and they would be hung, they would be lynched, they would be killed. Under pain of death, did black people even dare read the Bible, right? So how can you say that they gave black people the Bible? And the first Bible that they gave black people was a slave Bible that had books like Exodus was not in there, right? Or the majority of Exodus, they, you know, they cut out passages. Now I will say this, we need to look at the slave Bible and look at all the areas that they took out of the slave Bible. And now, right after 400 years, we should focus on the deleted, right, and the redacted portions of the slave Bible. Because that will give us insight into what they did not want us to know, right? What they did not know, want us to know. Here, slave ships, they brung us Christianity, right? Christianity, right? The ship of mercy. The good ship, Jesus. You remember that Shirley Temple? Remember the Shirley Temple? The good ship, lollipop, sucker, sucker. Right? You know, that, that's basically what they did to not just us, but their own people. And their own people are without excuse, are more without excuse. Right? Because their own people were reading the Bible. In fact, the Bible was very important for public education in the Americas. The reason why we have public schools and public education, historically speaking, is because of those so-called white Christians who believe in the Bible, right? And they want every white Christian to read the Bible. You hear what I'm saying, cuz? <laughs> they want it because, right? They want every... So that means that when they say, black people, we have to do this to black people because they are under the curse of Ham. Pastor, pastor, where's the curse of Ham? 
It's right over here in Genesis. And they read the passage in Genesis, and it says, Curse be Canaan. And nobody stopped for a moment to say, Uh, yeah, I get what you're saying about the curse of Ham, but it says the curse be Canaan. Shouldn't it be the curse of Canaan? Because then they would have been acknowledging the curse on themselves. Now, people say, Well, how could Ham be a black man, as they tell us, right? How could Ham be a black man or so called African? They didn't use that term African really, you know, so much. It began, it came into vogue during the enslavement time, during their, their hustle, you know, their hustle. They were hustling, right? Um, the, the white people came from black people. Genetics tells us that, right? So when I say, and when I prove, we, we, we proved this before, but we'll prove this here again as will be necessary because people need to see the facts and the evidence for themselves that white people come from black people, genetically speaking. It's called rece uh, recession. You know, like a recession? We're not talking about economical recession, right? We're talking about a genetical recession, right? Comes from them. But the word says, curse be Canaan. It does not say curse be Ham. But they ran with this curse of Ham. And then you get all these wise and prudent people, right? Scholarly people, writing big voluminous books and doing all these researches, this, 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 right? To talk about the curse of Ham and the curse of Ham, the curse of Ham. From most of what I've seen, very few have even gotten to the point. Now they have, because we've been talking about that there was no curse on, on, on Ham. Right, because it actually is the curse of Canaan. We've been speaking about this for the last maybe two decades, more than two decades, but on social media for the last two decades. Right? Yeah, yeah. Maybe some of y'all haven't heard it because maybe a lot of our videos haven't gotten a lot of hits or whatever else like that. And you know, because they want to suppress this. You know, that's why they do the algorithm. That's why they took down many, many channels and other things where our works were. Right? Because they know this is the real truth. Right? But people go after the, you know, the Broadway, 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 right? The grace of Godship, right? The first slave ship used to enslave Africans was named Jesus. Now we have to get into that point about Africans. Because African, the term African is also a new terminology. So what they do is they change words. It's like what lawyers and liars, you know, lawyers and liars do this a lot, right? You know, like when you're making an argument. You know, even if somebody's saying something to you and they got you, so you're going to say, oh, no, it's not that. You know, you're going to try to flip it around to make it look a little different. All right. But here, here, here. Let's go back to this right here, here, here. All right. Let's go back to this. So here in the second place, just want to just cover this right here. It's a little bit longer than we had intended it, but it's very necessary that we deal with this. Right. So here in Revelation chapter 18 verse 13 right at the end of the verse where it says and slaves and souls of men is a mistranslation it's a mistranslation it should read and we just showed you the greek word you see the g4983 we clicked on it g4983 it's a greek word soma and we can go other places in the translation of the bible in the New Testament, since this is the Greek, right, the coin of Greek, and where Soma is found in the so-called original text from which the KJV, the King James Version, was translated, elsewhere is translated as body and bodies. Elsewhere is translated as bodies. So you say, wait, 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 wait. In the, all these verses here, you translate the word Soma as bodies, but here, 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 you translate it as slaves. Wataguan. What is going on? What's going on with this? It's a deception. It's a lie. All right? And then they say, well, it's, 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 just, it's just a little lie. It's just, it's just this one word here and this one verse here. It's not a biggie, right? Wait, wait, wait. Are you going to call it a little white lie? Is, is this a little white lie? Right? A white so-called supremacist, a white you know, Gentile, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant lie? What we call this a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant lie? So here the word is bodies. Right, the body you can be referred to as a living body or as a dead body of a corpse, a dead body or corpse of body of man. It could be bodies of look. This says the second entry says bodies of planets and stars, so heavenly bodies. So that's the same word. So you're gonna say that the heavenly bodies, like the stars and the so-called planets, they are slaves too, right? Hmm. <laughs> They're slaves too. 
following that illogic, you can say that, but that will just be your imagination and I'll be a lie. Here, the third entry is use of a large or small number of men closely united into one society. So the word soma, the word soma that they mistranslate in Revelation chapter 18, 13 as slaves is really the word for body. The real word, the right word is body. The right word is body. It can be a living body. It can be a dead body. It can be a living body of a man or animal or planets or stars, heavenly bodies, heavenly soma, right? It can also, in the third entry here, use of a large or small number of men closely united to one society. We have this one talk about Christ in the New Testament says that Christ, HaMoshiach, Yeshua, Robeno, I not Rabbi, the Rabbi of Rabbis, our Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, called Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach. Right? He is the head, right? He is the Rosh, the Ras. He's the head, the Rosh, right? And we of the church are oh, that body, right? Many members, right? Many members, yeah? Many members, but one body. So that's the word Soma. That's the same word Soma that elsewhere, almost every other place, it, elsewhere, countless other places in the New Testament, it has been translated into English as body or bodies. But here in Revelation chapter 18, verse 13, is translated as slaves. When it rightfully should read, and bodies and souls of men. So one of the merchandise, one of the types of merchandise of this end time, Gentile, Anglo-American, white Anglo-Saxon, Protestant, so-called white supremacy, this system, this society, this latter-day Gentile, the times of the Gentiles, one of the products or, or a class of the products is the bodies and souls. Bodies and souls. And if you look at it now in the, in the so-called reality, this is true. They do commerce in all these other types of things. Like on Wall Street, if we go back to what happened to my people, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, the Bait Yisrael. Right? Wall Street. Wall Street, where there was a wall there where they sold black people on that wall. They sold my people. They sold Yisrael, Israel, right? and here in North America, the tribe of Judah, Yehuda, so-called Negroes, on that wall there. They sold bodies. But now, what do they sell? They sell products and goods, and a lot of the products and goods appeal to people psychological, which is their soul. The, 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 the psychological is the soul aspect. Right, the psyche is the soul. Literally, the word psyche is the soul. So they do commerce in all types of merchandise, including the bodies and souls of men. Right, the bodies and souls of men. Now, what does that do with slavery? Well, that's another point right there, but they'll make you believe that it's slaves here, but we're proving to you that it's not. So, here, uh, a large or small number of men closely united into one society, right? You know, that's a body. Like we said, the LOJ Society. Go check us out, LOJS.org, right? The church, in that sense, right? We many members, but one body, right? And Christ is the head, and the head of Christ is Yahuwah Eloheinu. Is he who be who he be, the power HaKadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem, the Holy One, blessed be he, blessed be the name. Or a family, a family is the same thing. In a family, there's a lot of members, but they are one body, one soma, as it were. So a social, ethical, or mystical soma, body. Now, if you want to believe the lie of the mistranslation, slave, then now we have to insert this word slave and then it becomes confusing and then you can't even understand the simplicity of what the Bible is saying. And that's why a lot of people can't understand the simplicity of what the Bible is saying. Because they prefer to believe the lie even when they are shown and proven the truth. But that's on them, right? May something better be for you and for I and I and I. So in the New Testament, in the NT, the New Testament, the Brit Chadasha, of the church. So we just was talking about that. Many members, one body. The fourth entry says that a soma, a body, right? Soma, the basic koina Greek word for body, is that which casts a shadow as distinguished from the shadow itself. Like when they say that the Old Testament, Brit, Yeshana, 
is the shadow and the New Testament, right? The New Testament is that substance, right? And what is a shadow? How does the whole thing of shadow works, right? A shadow, you see the shadow because something is standing in light, because something is standing, the true substance is standing in the light, right? And therefore the shadow, it exists because what casts that shadow is a true substance standing in the light. And, and, and the key is standing in the light, the light, the light, the light, the light. <laughs> Most of them don't have light. So they stumble in the shadow, stumble in the dark. Here, Strong's Concordance. Once again, strong concordance to make it simple. The body. See right there? The body. Just, just let that sink in. This is the word that in the second of the two places, if you search throughout the King James Version of the Bible, the so-called 66 books, right? You'll find two places where it'll have slave. But you'll hear a whole bunch of rhetoric. Oh, the Israelites enslaved, or, or uh, Moses authorized slavery, or, or there was slavery in the Bible. The Bible justified slavery, and they're going after the wasp lies. See, a wasp, you know the difference between a wasp and a bee? A bee, you know, you know what a bee is, right? You know what a wasp is, like a wasp, like a hornet, a wasp, right? They look uh, similar, you notice that? A wasp and a bee look similar. The bee makes honey. Right, the bee makes honey, and honey is very sweet. It's very healthy, you know. And and, and now the bees—they're killing the bees, messing up, m messing up the bee society. You know what I mean? But the wasp looks like a—it looks like a—it looks like a bee, but it doesn't produce. It don't produce. It can't produce the honey. And the wasp—this is a metaphor for the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant who picked up the Bible, who used and abused the Bible. Who talked a whole bunch of things and now there's a lot of folks confused. They can't get the sweetness of the scripture. And also honey can be used as a medicine to heal as well. Right? It's also cathartic. It can use for, be used for wounds too. You know, to take out the, the poison. And so, I mean, there's a whole bunch of uses for honey. You can go Google it and, and look into it. But that's produced by a bee. Right? Not by a wasp. A wasp doesn't produce that. But if you don't know the difference between the two... They both look alike. So there's other people that have used this Bible. The point here being, right, the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, W-A-S-P, the wasp, have used the Bible, right? But they all, all they have done is stung ones and, and produce sickness. They have produced no honey, right? And so now when we're talking about the bee, right, the, the real bee and trying to bring out the honey, they think, right, when they see the bee, they think it's the wasp. Because they don't, they lack discernment. They lack discernment. They can't discern, right? They don't have a good sense of discrimination. They can't discriminate between, you know, between the two. I'm not talking about so-called racial discrimination. I'm talking about having discernment. Let's use that word right there because people get caught up on these words. You know, they probably didn't do very well in some basic classes in school like reading comprehension. But here, the body as a sound whole. Using a wide, a very wide application, literally or figuratively. It says bodily, body, and slave. Now, the last three you see right there in strong definition, when, when it has that, that, that hyphen, right, it's showing how you may find this in the King James Version of the Bible. You'll find the word soma being used to say bodily, used to say body, and in this one place, this one place in Revelation, a book that most Christians don't even really look at too much. Most Christians, you know, most of the churches, you know, they don't look at that Revelation thing, that Revelation thing. Oh, I mean, they probably have, but really don't. They don't get into Revelation. I mean, nowadays they do for all these, these wasp eschatology, right? But that's a whole other related matter right there. Okay, we already over on not over on time but it's a little longer than we would have um you know that we were planning to but this is still important right here because this all now backs up when we say that there's no slavery in the bible there's no you've been lied to you've been lied to you've been hoodwinked you've been bamboozled you've been deceived the wool has been pulled over your proverbial and even your third eye 
You, you just been lie, 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 lie. They play to your feelings and emotions. And emotions cloud judgment. You know, we just going to buy the book, buy the book, buy the book. Right? Chain and command, buy the book, buy the book, buy the book. Right? Going buy the book. You, you know, you don't really have to buy the book, but it's good, you know, to buy the book. We got a bookstore, some very good books. Check it out at lojs.org, right? Which can help ones if ones seek the truth for themselves. But here, this should read, and bodies and souls of men. So Babylon does commerce, and for example, let's just get into this verse a little bit more, just the context of the verse right here. It says right here, it says right here, and the merchants of the earth. See, now we talk about the, the European, the white man, the Anglo-Americans are Canaanites. They're descendants of the ancient Canaanites. Let's say this on the record. The Israelites are not Canaanites. Again, the Israelites are not Can. Many people will make you believe that. Even some of our Israelite brothers and, and some of them also, some of them get a little confused with that and they believe in that too. Because some of these scholars and PhDs and all these people went to these academic, you, know, you don't recognize a lot of these universities and colleges, they have been, um, how can I say, like, like the, um, they have run with the system of things. And only under pressure have they kind of like, um, you know, um, how can you say, they have been like a, a, a they co-sign. They have co-signed a lot of iniquity, right, academically, intellectually. So and you might hear like some colleges, yeah, they protest about this. But I'm, I'm a really, it's still, it's still the hoodwink and bamboozle, right? And besides, they're not our colleges and universities. They're colleges and universities that were established to train those who would who would um, manage and, and rule this system of, of, of oppression, of downpression of my people who were enslaved, enslaved in this system of things. Now, other people go to these universities so and so on, but it's almost like even worse for them. But I'll let, I'll let the people who, there's a lot of folks who, who have gone to college and university and they believe the lie and they got to find out that's a lie and they can speak for themselves. But here, just to get a full full of this verse, Revelation chapter 18, let's start from verse 11. You can get into more of this right here, you know, because talking about the judgment of Babylon, as you can see right here in verse 10, right? Right, standing afar off for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city. Notice the city. Remember we said that there is Vatican City called Babylon. Vatican City called Babylon. London City called Babylon. New York City, <laughs> New York, New York. Wall Street, especially that epicenter there where many of my people were enslaved, enslaved, bought and sold like, like, like property. Right? Also known as Babylon. Standing afar off for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, Babylon. You know, and then you could add DC into that, but I'm just giving you the empire, city, states, and everything, right? That mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, over her. That bitch, Babylon is a bitch. You, you know, people like to use this word bitch, like a female dog. But Babylon is the bitch, right? Spiritually, metaphysically, in reality. For no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. Now remember we said, just on the record, the Canaanites are the merchants. Because it says, no longer will there be the Canaanite in the house of the Lord. No longer will there be the Canaanite in the house of the Lord. Right? Now, let me just go through this and we're going to seal up with that and then pick up with more on the Indo-European and the latter-day white people. They descend from the ancient Canaanites. And the ancient Canaanites are also called the merchants. And there's a prophecy within the prophet. Right? Let's get the B-I-B-L-E right here. There's the prophet, I think, what is it? Zephan, is it, is it Zechariah? I think it's Zechariah. Right, where it says, no longer, no more will the Canaanite be in the house of the Lord. But let's get through this right here. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. The merchandise, uh, so what is that? Now here it describes the type of merchandise. The merchandise of gold and silver, 
and precious stones and pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thine wood and all manner vessels of ivory and all manner vessels of most precious wood and of brass and of iron and of marble now here's what's interesting we talk about so-called slave ships many of these slave ships did business in all of these products and they brought them to all these cities my right? vatican city london city new york city mm. how interesting is that and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beast and sheep and horses and chariots now here in the interpolation it says in slaves now we know the correct translation and bodies and souls of men now it's interesting that if you look up body and soul 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 is like a product line but see they cover it up they cover it up by saying and slaves and souls of men now we know the truth of it let's look at the note oh translator's note where's the translator's note we see the translator's note right here all right the translator's note right here is slaves or bodies of men look at the translator's note right there there is the translator's note 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 that slaves or bodies isn't that a big difference that's a big difference there I mean, we can, we can philosophize, well, you know, like, you know, sometimes like, you know, your body is like your slave and da, 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 da. But, but before we get into philosophy and sit down and have a chat on it, let's try to figure out and get what it really says. And we've been showing you right here what it really says. Therefore, just to return right here and to seal up right here with our original, the original premise right here of this right here that there is no slavery right why there is no slave learn why there is no slavery in the bible no slavery in the king james version of the bible and once you really grasp this truth i know a lot of people it's gonna be hard for them because they probably have been reading these later day you know over the last maybe 20 20 or so year translation 20 30 year translations that have gotten out there that has translated or, or changed changed different words in the Bible but the Bible that was being used for the 400 years was the 1611 version of the Bible known as King James version of the Bible and what we've established is that there's no slavery in the Bible and even the two places, one in the Old and one in the New Testament, where we find slave, in the Old Testament, it's only the imagination of the translator putting it in italics. And in the New Testament, it is a mistranslation. It should say bodies, bodies and souls of men. So when you hear people say, well, the Bible um, justifies slavery, say, no, tell them the Canaanite. The Canaanite justified slavery by misinterpreting right and lying on the bible and doing a three card monty game doing a trick like watch the card watch the card even and that's why i use the curse of ham the so-called curse of ham thing because if you go to genesis chapter 9 you see clearly it says curse be canaan right and it's a it's a big stretch now to say well that's just saying the same thing as curse be ham but then even in the bible ham had a bunch of other children Right, who were not under that so-called curse be Canaan. But here's the here's the kicker. Here's a real kicker. When you get to find out that the so-called Canaanites, right, in one sense of the Bible and the scripture and ancient witness is the merchant. Right? In fact, before we go, before we go, before we go right here, let's just bring this on the record. I don't want this just to be hanging out. Well, not my, my, my one. Jehovah is my shepherd, I shall not want it, want it. Okay, the Canaanite. There'll be no more of the Canaanite, right? Right, Canaanite, right? And let's put no more. I, if I recall correctly, it says the Canaanite shall not be. Here we go, Zechariah. Zechariah 14 21. Look at this. Looky, 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 looky. Right? You looking? Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah, in Yehuda, 
shall be holiness. And brothers, it's Yehuda, not Yahuda. But we we'll get into that. I know some of you are going to hold to it and hold to it, but hopefully you will know the truth by and by. Zechariah 14, 21. Yay! Every part in Yerushalayim and in Yehuda shall be holiness la Yahuwah to Jehovah la Yahuwah tzabaot. To Jehovah, he who be who he be of armies, he who be who he be of hosts, Jehovah of hosts. And all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and seize therein. And in that day there shall no more the Canaanite, there shall be no more. Be no more. Can you say be no more? The cracker, the pecker wood. There shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of Yahuwah Sebaot. In the house of Jehovah of hosts, Jehovah of armies. Now, why is this important? Well, this is important. <laughs> this is important because, first point, the Canaanites, right, are not the Israelites. The Canaanites are the European, the Indo European, the Indo European peoples. The Indo European and the Edom, Edom is connected. Edom is actually the head of the Canaanites, but just the Indo-European peoples, right? And when it says no more, there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord, when people talk about um, the Bible being used and scriptural proof to justify slavery and slavery in the Bible and how they use twisted up different verses to justify the enslavement of the Bait Yisrael, the house of Israel. We black and brown peoples here in the Americas and the Caribbean, Caribbean, the trans-Ethiopic ocean, right? That's what it means. That's why so many white folks today, think about it for a moment. White folks about 200 years ago, not all, not all, but the majority of them were Bible-believing Christians. They believed in the Bible, even if it was a pragmatic belief. It wasn't a spiritual, religious belief. They believed in the Bible. The Bible was the thing. That's why when you go into court, people swear or affirm on the Bible. That's why you go into court, you see, in God we trust. The Bible is a very big part of the Western Gentile world. It's part of its foundation. That's why us going into the Bible, bringing out the truth, this is why Babylon is fallen, is fallen. People don't see it yet, right? Because it fully has not fallen in a full manifest way, but you can see they've fallen off. White people have fallen off from their, you know, religiosity, their religious belief. A lot of them are questioning the Bible, right? But when they say we got to do this to black people because it's the curse of, it's the curse of Ham. Right? And they said, well, look in the Bible. And the, black, and the white people were free to look at the Bible. Unlike the black people, they were free to look in the Bible. They were being taught the Bible in order to teach them how to read. Right? This was how they built up their society 400 years ago here in America. That's how public schooling started with the Bible. Right? So they went to Genesis chapter 9 and they read, Curse be Canaan. And they said, oh, okay, I get it. Curse be Ham. What? Hold, well, hold up. It says, Curse be Canaan. But the pastor, the preacher, the pastor, the preacher, was lying. The white cracker, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant was lying. That is what it means that there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. Right? Now, many of them, you know, go into, you know, Swami, Bami, East Indian culture, all kind of different kind of things they're doing. But most of them have dropped like a hot potato. Right? You know, this whole Christian thing. Right? Because a lot of them have found out that their pastors and preachers, their white pastors and cracker preachers, peckerwood preachers were lying. Right? The white Anglo-Saxon Protestant was lying. White supremacy is a lie, as we've been saying from the very beginning. Let's click on Canaanite. The Canaanite, Kanani. Kanani, right? Kana, you see where it says zealous, all of that, so forth and so on. Look, here we go right here. Let's go to Strong's. Right? It says partial. They say here partial from the H. 3667. Here we're at the age 3669. Let's look on that. Kana'an. Now, Kana'an mean lowland, right? Kana'an was the fourth son, right, according to the Bible of Ham, right? And it says that, and he was a progenitor of the Phoenicians and various nations who people the seacoast of Palestine, right? The land, and this is, this is what they say, you know, this is some basic. Now, look at the third one. The third entry of Canaan, right? So even like, and ones like the the Egyptians, for all you Kemetic 
folks out there, some of you Israelites that are into that comedic stuff, right? You know about the sea peoples, right? The, the, the Egyptians hated, they hated the sea people, yo. They, they, these are all part of the same peoples, right? And then notice they were traveling on the sea, right, from coast to coast. This sounds a lot like what they were doing during the times of, um, you know, the slave ships, uh, the enslavement of the Israelites, you know, during the time of slavery. Traveling on ships from here to there, doing merchandise, picking up goods, stealing stuff, stealing people, taking things from other people, and then taking it back other places and selling it. This is where the idea in the Hebrew is so so prophetically on point, where it says merchant trader. You see with the merchant, the trader. The merchant, the trader. Right? Oh, pirate. Yes, they rob I. Right? They rob I and I. Right? And the merchant sips. Go check out the lyrics of that tune right there. Right? Here, humiliated Canaan, son of Ham, the fourth son of Ham. So they condemned the whole family of Kam, of Kem, of Kemet, of Kam. Right? When it was just one son, one bad seed. Right? One, we could say one albino seed. Right? One uh, degenerating uh, recessive gene. Right? In the family. That's all it takes. You know what I mean? Sometimes a black family, you know, have all black children, but there are albinos. There are the so-called albinos. And we're not saying that albinos are the white men. What we're saying is that putting it in reality, this word here is true. Right? Also, the country inhabited by him, Canaan. What, what it says? Merchant traffic. You see it? And they spell traffic the old English way here with the K. T-R-A-F-F-I-C-K. There was that movie Traffic. There was two versions of it. Most people know the version of the movie Traffic with the C. You need to check out the movie Traffic with the K. The movie Traffic with the K, I think it was an English one, a British one, right? The U from the UK was the original one. And then they made uh, the US version that most folks know called Traffic. But this all connects with Canaan. Right, Canaan. Here, to this verse here in um, in Zechariah, Zechariah, right, Zacharias, it says, Canaanite or inhabitants of, of Canaan, right, Canaan, right? Here it says, by implication, by implication, what is implied here from the Hebrew, the Hebraic sense that we find it in this verse right here in Zechariah chapter, Zechariah chapter 14, verse 21, right, by implication, by implication, a peddler. The Canaanites standing for their neighbors, the Ishmaelites, who conducted mercantile caravans. So we have the Ishmaelites, like to say almost in a, in a prophetic way, latter day, like notice this right here. Who are the two peoples, the two group, people groups that we have historical documentation that were part of the so-called slave trade of buying and selling black people, so-called African peoples and black people, namely we as Beta Israel, Israel people. Who were the two peoples? The white people, right? And the Arabs. They said the white and the Arabs. In fact, the Arab slave trade people don't even talk about. Well, the Arabs connect their origin to who? Ishmael. So even here in the Strong's definition, it's giving us powerful and, and, and accurate right, evidence that what the scripture is saying, right, when it is properly understood, properly interpreted, is bringing out the very same facts that we have so-called on the ground. Right? The Canaanites and the Ishmaelites. In other words, the whites, the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, the counterfeit Christians, and the Arabs who conducted mercantile caravan. Now they conducted mercantile caravan, right? Of slavery, of slave ships. I mean they they, they dealt with other products too. But there was a time in history where they were the first many Scholars of our people and even other scholars have brought forth proof and historical evidence. I mean, the slave trade in East Africa, the one that Kedemawi Hala Selassie, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, that he abolished under the penalty of death, the Fandia trade was conducted by the same Ishmaelites or Arabs, right, on the east coast of Africa. And then we have the Canaanites that sail to the west coast, the Portuguese, these other, you know, the British, the rest of them. They all descend from the Indo-European people known as the Slavic people. And what they did was take this terminology, 
right? Take the curse, the, the curse that they were under, and they superimpose the curse that they were under on Israel, on black and brown people, on so-called African and black peoples. Right? So when it says that that and be no more, right, the Canaanite in the house of the Lord. You notice that many white people don't defend this Christian whitewashed Christian thing like they used to, right? Because think about how many of us as Israelites and others are speaking today, right? And what we're saying on social media here and there. Do you think that would have ever been possible 400 years ago? Some of us tried 400 years ago, right? And we were just hanging. How's it hanging? Many of us were hanging, right? 400 years ago. Right, during a period of 400 years ago, right, when we tried that. You know, the Nat Turners and the rest of them, when they picked up the Bible and say, oh, we're Israelites, right? We have to get up, stand up, and fight. What happened, right? So that proves that the Canaanite is no longer in the house of the Lord, is being driven out the house of the Lord. Most of the white folks are going to other things. There's still, there's still some of the overzealous, you know, ones and ones who are still in it. That's why they're so crazy, fanatical, and radical. You know what I mean? <laughs> Trying to act like they're keeping a sabbatical. But anyway, um, the Canaanite is the merchant, the trafficker. And the Canaanite, along with the Ishmaelite, think about that for a moment. The whites the, and the Arabs. Slavery in Africa amongst the black people that, 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 that downpressed and decimated and, and, and raped and pillaged, you know, um, um, steal, kill, destroyed. The people behind it historically were white peoples, right, who came on ships. Notice that. They came on ships. Remember the Canaanite connection with the sea peoples and the ships, the Phoenicians and the ships. Don't forget that. And the sea peoples, ancient Egypt, the ships, right? And even though the Canaanites were descendant and the Phoenicians from the Canaanites and the Canaanites were descendant from the Hamites, they attacked their own people. Why would they attack their own people? See, that's where we get now the genetic curse or the recession right the genetics of it all you know we can get into that a little bit more and the Arabs so we have the Canaanites standing for the white people and the Ishmaelites standing for the Arabs and both of them were part of the mercantile historical mercantile slave traffic business and not that they just did slavery it was the only merchandise it was all the merchandise that we pointed to in Revelation chapter 18 right all that merchandise right and and they still are dealing with merchandise this very day right the oil <laughs> think about how important oil is right and who's protecting those oil fields in Saudi and the rest of the places who's who well operation Iraqi liberation OIL oil right so we can still see them in bed together <laughs> together all together now so right there they're there touched on that we're gonna make that a separate video but we can get into some more details on that but once again to the original premise you're not proven by the facts and the evidence no slavery in the King James Version of the Bible you've been lied to you've been deceived you've been hoodwinked you've been banned we all have but now you know the truth the truth shall set you free from the lie of slavery